This is a new indictment, but we will be taking up all matters that touch on these three defendants from the old indictments and anything that council wants to bring, anything that council wants to bring up concerning the new indictment. I've been discussing with uh, the attorneys essentially the protocol that we will be following. I also, I was disturbed recently when Monday a week ago a news report was released by one of the it was obvious that material had been furnished to that television station that uh, essentially is not in the public domain uh, uh, they read apparently from information that is still in an investigative file under seal and I was a little uh, I wasn't a little, I, I was upset by that because if an attorney had leaked that information to the press, I would, to the press, I would deem it very, very unprofessional. I uh, have some problems with the news media that gets material that has, quote, been leaked to them and then releases it and sensationalizes it. I told the press early on that I could be their best friend or I could be their worst. I've been on the bench over a quarter of a century. I have sealed very few files, usually for minors and things that are required to be sealed by statute. I have never issued a gag order. But I will say that if things continue to be leaked and sensationalized, the court might be put in that position. I would hope that the news media will be professional in what they release because they could be jeopardizing uh, being placed under gag order in this case. I don't want to do that. I think the public has a right to know. I think the public has a right to know. But uh, things that are not public, so I think that's probably enough said about that. And if I were a member of the media, I think I would uh, talk with my colleagues about jeopardizing my further access. We will be taking each individual <coughs> and four. <laughs> or ten, whatever. <laughs> we will be taking each individual uh, defendant up. First order of business will be arraignment. And then I will take any matters that council wishes, council wishes to uh, uh, take up touching that case. There's been a development that has occurred this morning that uh, I think 
significantly impacts this case and will affect the speed at which we can travel in getting this case ready to trial. I understand that the state this morning filed notice of aggravating uh, circumstances and intent to seek the death penalty as to each of the three defendants. Is that correct? It is, Your Honor. All right. As a result of that, it will become necessary for the court to appoint additional counsel for uh, at least have individual uh, uh, counsel, and uh, the court will be in, in the process of uh, appointing someone that is death penalty qualified to assist on the case of uh, Zachary Adams, Ms. Thompson, and John Dillon Adams, Mr. Maddox. So court will uh, hopefully get someone, you, you've, su suggested, you, you've su suggested someone that you think you can work with well. I'll be checking with Mr. Matty. I'd rather have someone that is willing to act on this case as opposed to the court appointing someone that would join with reluctance. So we will see if we can take care of that. Uh, that's essentially what I discussed in that back room, is what we've covered up to now. Um, let's go ahead and bring Zachary Ryan Adams in. Let's, let's bring him to the podium. You are Zachary Ryan Adams. Yes, sir. Mr. Adams, in case 15 CR 30, there's been a new indictment that has been issued. This essentially is a superseding document. It, it includes primarily the charges that you were earlier charged with under a different indictment. There might be some additional charges as well, but uh, most of these charges were on the other indictment, but you are now indicted uh, with your two co-defendants in one indictment. In count one of the indictments, you have been indicted with uh, the offense of first degree murder. It is essentially, uh, you're charged with uh, unlawfully killing Holly Lynn Bobo and the per uh, perpetration are of or the attempt to perpetrate kidnapping. It's what legally is known as felony murder. Do you understand what you're charged with? Yes, sir. You understand the nature of those charges? Yes, sir. Ms. Thompson, do you waive the reading of that indictment? Yes, Your Honor. All right, we'll go to count two. You are charged along with the co-defendants on that, having committed the offense of especially aggravated kidnapping in violation of 13-305. Do you understand what you have been charged with? Yes, sir. Do you understand the nature of that charge? Yes, sir. Do you waive the formal reading of that? Ms. Thompson? Yes, sir. All right. Ms. Thompson? Yes, sir. All right. As to the third count. You're charged along with two co-defendants with having committed the offense of especially aggravated kidnapping in violation of 39 in violation of 39-13-305. Do you understand what you have been charged and the nature of that charge? Yes, sir. Do you waive the formal reading of that indictment? Yes, Your Honor. Count four. You are charged along with co-defendants with having committed the offense. degree murder. Uh, it's a felony murder once again that you uh, did unlawfully and with the intent to commit rape, kill Holly Lynn Bobo in the perpetration or the attempt to, per, uh, to perpetrate rape, uh, thereby committing the offense of first degree murder in violation of 39-13-202. Do you understand the nature of that charge. Yes, sir. Way formal reading. Yes, sir. All right, count five. You're charged with uh, having committed the offense of aggravated rape in violation of Tennessee Code Annotated 39-13-502. Do you understand count? Yes, sir. Do you waive the formal reading? Yes, sir. All right. 
count six, you're charged with having committed the offense of aggravated rape in violation of TCA 39-13-502. Do you understand what you're charged with on that count? Yes, sir. Way formal reading. Yes, sir. To that, with having committed the offense of aggravated rape in violation of Tennessee Code Annotated 39-13-502. Do you understand what you have been charged with? Yes, sir. Way formal reading. Yes, Your Honor. Count eight, you're charged with having committed the offense of murder in the first degree, premeditated uh, killing of Holly Lynn Bobo in violation of Tennessee Code Annotated 39-13-202. Do you understand what you've been charged with? Yes, sir. You understand the nature of that charge? Yes, sir. Put way formal reading. Yes, sir. All right, that completes the uh, arraignment process. And he enters the plea of not guilty. Yeah, let the record so reflect a plea of not guilty is entered. Uh, it's my intent to uh, attempt to design at some point a scheduling order. In speaking with the attorneys, discovery will be an ongoing uh, process. However, state's attorneys have indicated that they're ready to turn over all discovery within 30 days. And I've given them some extra latitude. They said they've actually got it ready and can be done within a week. I will consider that to be the attorney's work product when they receive it. Uh, I expect you to share it with your defendant in consultation, but I don't know that outside sources should necessarily benefit from your discovery, okay? Yes, sir. All right, what other matters do we want to touch on Mr. Zachary Adams? I would like to say for the record, just in terms of the report that was on Channel 5 last week, um, while I have been provided with the photographs that they referred to in the report, I have not been provided with the affidavit to the best of my knowledge and I've been through that discovery and I've had multiple people go through that discovery. I've not been provided with the affidavit that they referred to and I have not been provided with the um, TBI lab report that confirmed that the blood was Holly Bobo's. So I don't even have that information. I would like it um, and hopefully I will get it soon but I don't believe I've had that information. Have that information. They will get you the discovery. She said it is indexed. It's indexed. She will furnish a copy, the same copy, to each attorney. Uh, in that material are co-defendant statements, if there are any. There's also jinx material, which technically they're not required to provide until after that person testifies, until after that person testifies but... Uh, they, they might very well be aware of my history. I mean, it's possible so as to not delay a trial. Yes. And on top of that, Your Honor, I had an opportunity to speak with Ms. Thompson this morning and have made ourselves available um, and that we've agreed, I've offered to, once the discovery is given, to meet with her, um, answer any questions she has about, you know, what we are providing, point her in a particular direction if she has questions. Um, I think open discovery, uh, I think it facilitates the case moving and is beneficial for all parties, so both she, the state and the defendant. When she gets her co-counsel in mind, it's probably, you know, it, that would be the time to do it, but the offer remains on the table. Well, as I said, one of my primary objectives is to preserve the defendant's right to a fair trial as well as the state's right to a fair trial. And I think open discovery uh, will actually aid all parties concerned. And there was an objection that I had expressed at prior hearings, and the state assures me that open discovery doesn't mean just come and look and see what we have, but they will file a record with the court so we can be clear as to what I've been provided. We're going to file, file it directly with me. We're going to file a duplicate copy now, I know, directly with Your Honor. Uh, that way, as we run into discovery disputes, we'll, we'll know where we're going, okay? Um, at this point, Your Honor, in light of the fact that the, the state has just filed this notice of aggravating circumstances on the new charges, um, we had several motions that were before the court, but um, I don't believe that now is the proper time to have hearing on those. 
we'd like to uh, continue those matters until we have an opportunity to. At, at some point, at some point, uh, we'll be proceeding totally under the new indictment, and I would assume the old ones because everything's covered in the new one. But we want to preserve your right to present those motions if you wish or desire. <clears throat> Can we say that those motions, any motion that I have filed in the other case, will automatically transfer to the new case? It, to the new case? It, the it, discovery? It kind of us. That's the only reason that I've delayed this, was because I frankly didn't want the defense. Let, let's, let's not now cross yes. yet. Yes. Okay. I just like, I don't need to file a new motion for discovery, and I had a motion regarding Brady material. I don't need to refile those duplicate motions in this. Unless you find deficiencies in the discovery, okay. at which point you can file anything to bring the matters to the court's attention that you feel are appropriate. But on and the then the, the circumstances with the filing of notice have changed dramatically. Yes. And, I had, yes. and I had wanted to find out <coughs> how long you folks felt motions. We've got a whole new situation. So I'm not going to be able to move at breakneck speed as I had hoped. I think in fairness to all parties, uh, when you're talking about the ultimate punishment, then there's a heightened due process. And I want the attorneys to have, and I want the attorneys to have an adequate time to file their motions. But I'm going to suggest in 180 days. So let's start looking at that framework, okay? Yes. And that will be as to each defendant. Yes. Okay? And we will try to have new counsel on board uh, probably by the end of this week, okay? Yes. Thank Matter you. of fact, you might notify that person and make sure, because this is going to be very burdensome. You already know that. He knows. Okay. He, he's been involved. He's aware of the nature of the case. He's okay. actually met Mr. Adams and... He's prepared. Okay. Is there anything you don't understand at this point, Mr. Adams? No, sir. All right. Let's uh, dismiss Mr. Zachary Rye Adams. Yes, sir. Bring in Jason Wayne Autry. Just at the podium there. You are Jason Wayne Autry? Yes, sir. Mr. Autry, we're here today to arraign you on a new indictment. This is essentially something that will take place of the old will take place of the old indictment. There might be additional charges on this that were not contained in the old indictment, but you have been indicted along with Zachary Rye Adams and John Dillon Adams in one single charging instrument. Uh, we're here today to arraign you on these charges and then take up any other matters that uh, you folks feel are appropriate. Uh, you are charged in case 15 CR 30. In the first count, you're charged with what is known as uh, felony murder. The, uh, you, it charges you with unlawfully and with the intent to commit kidnapping that you killed Holly Lynn Bobo in the perpetration or the attempt to perpetrate kidnapping, therefore committing the offense of first-degree murder in violation of TCA 3913-202. Do you understand what you have been charged with? Yes, sir. Uh, you understand the nature of that charge? Yes, sir. Do you waive formal reading of the indictment? Uh, we do waive formal reading. Um, I would qualify Mr. Autry's answer 
As to the nature and cause of the accusation, we have had a continuing problem in this case with that, and we don't want to waive any objections. You're not today. waiving anything today, okay? Very well. All right. Count number two, you're charged with having committed the offense of uh, especially aggravated kidnapping of Holly Lynn Bobo in violation of TCA 39-13-305. Do you understand what you've been charged with? Yes, sir. Same situation, he understands the nature to the extent not waiving anything. Right, we understand what statutes are involved. All right. We you waive the formal reading? We waive the reading. All right. Count number three, you have been charged with having committed the offense of especially aggravated kidnapping of Holly Lynn Bobo in violation of TCA 39-13-305. Do you understand what you've been charged with? Yes, sir. Same situation, waive the formal reading. Yes, Your Honor. Count number four, you're charged with having committed the offense of uh, felony first degree murder in the perpetration or attempt to perpetrate rape in violation of Tennessee Code Annotated 39-13-202. Do you understand what you have been charged with? Yes, sir. Same situation? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, count five, you've been charged with having committed the offense of aggravated rape in violation of TCA 39-13-502. Do you understand what you have been charged with? Yes, sir. Same situation? Yes, Your Honor. Count number six, you're charged with having committed the offense of aggravated rape in violation of TCA 39-13-502. Do you understand what you've been charged with? Yes, sir. Uh, same situation? Yes, Your Honor. Count seven, you're charged with having committed the offense of aggravated rape in violation of TCA 39-13-502. Do you understand what you've been charged with? Yes, sir. Way formal reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. Pleas of not guilty will be entered on whoop, I've got eight, the eighth count as well. Uh, you've been charged with having committed the offense of premeditated murder in the first degree in violation of TCA 39-13-202. Do you understand what you've been charged with? Yes, sir. Way formal reading, Mr. Ferguson? Yes, Your Honor. As to the indictment, counts of, uh, or pleas of not guilty will be entered as to all eight counts of the indictment. Other uh, matters Honor, that you wish to take up today, or are you in the same situation that Ms. Thompson was? Uh, Your Honor, we would ask that Mr. Autry be determined to be indigent for purposes of support services and expert assistance. I realize he'll need to fill out an, aff an affidavit. Can you get that affidavit and get to the court, and I will... Uh, I, I think there's very little question. You don't have any financial resources? Absolutely not. Uh, I'm going to make a preliminary determination of indigency for purposes of uh, getting support service, uh, services, mitigation specialists, whatever are deemed necessary in his proper defense. Very well. If you'll get me an affidavit to support Cer that. Certainly okay. will. In regard to Mr. Zachary Adams, there was a discussion of open file discovery. Do we have an on the record representation that open file discovery will be provided as I don't know that we said open file. What we did say, you'll be furnished. The same discovery of each defendant, the state will be under a continuing duty to provide any additional discovery. They will. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I think she's giving you everything she's got. They will. And you've already essentially, under two DAs ago, had essentially an electronic dump that I understand it's just unbelievable the amount of material in that. Uh, that stretches the human imagination, but she will have this in form indexed, and I will have a we, copy so that when we have uh, any discovery disputes, we'll know where we can get Yes, we were furnished two external hard drives that the defense had provided to the state. Uh, there was some difficulty in the organization of it, but I'm pleased to hear that this will be indexed. Well, we're not, we're indexing it, we're not organizing, indexing it, we're not organizing it perhaps the way that defense counsel wishes that we would. They'll have an index. They're still going to have to work. There's no way to make this small. Your Honor made reference to the voluminous amount. It's over four terabytes. I've been told that's a quarter of the size of the Library of Congress. Can't make it small, but they're going to have an index. I understand. The haystack's still there. They're going to give you some needles. Okay? I understand. Uh, you want to hold your other matters in reserve? Uh, yes, and Your Honor, as to... Uh, 
indictment number, the previous indictment, uh, number 2014-CR-20, we had had motions pending that request dismissal with prejudice, and we will accordingly and we will accordingly object to any knowledge proceed with that. We're, we're keeping we, those files yes. open until everything's done, and then there'll be no process. Yes, and and I understand. I, I received um, one motion from the state. Uh, uh, one uh, filing from the state says state's response to defend this motion for bill of particulars. I understand there's an additional 83 page or so uh, pleading or filing that I've not yet there's received. There's some cases so, attached and some other matters. So if, 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 if we can if we can hold those off until later. I, would and then apply, I, want, I want you to get your discovery before we address the bill of particular issue. The state is saying we will give you complete discovery such that we feel that it will obviate the need for a bill of particulars. The court will cross that at a later time. I understand. And, Your Honor, I do. And then I, I guess we ought to say uh, Mr. Flanagan, who's also co-counsel, uh, he received the court's permission to be away today. Yes. He's uh, apparently got a vacation scheduled. That's what I understand. And uh, I, I think it's good that attorneys periodically take vacations. Very well. Ms. McGinley had me on vacation last week with grandkids. So. Very well. All right. Uh, Anything else on this? I would apprise the court uh, that, that I do anticipate fairly promptly filing some dispositive motion regarding the new indictment. And if we can, since that would moot out the case, if we could take those up pretty promptly. Since that would moot out the case, if we could take those up pretty promptly. How soon? Um, I can file them uh, by the end of next week, and uh, they can be for your hearing any time afterwards. Well, of course, it's taking me to respond. And I don't know what motions he's talking about. Well, I, I, I can apprise that. How about July 29? That's about a month and a half. Very well. I try to keep Wednesdays available for this case because a lot of the courthouse offices are closed and with the enhanced security and the thing that try to do that. Let's see if we can. Your Honor, was that a date for a hearing on that motion? Is that what you just mentioned? It would not be. Well, might be an evidentiary hearing, but I don't know yet whether it will require evidentiary hearing. Good morning or afternoon, Your Honor. I guess I'm, I'm asking if we can, since we don't know what motion to refer to, can we at least get a copy of it and see whether or not it requires Let, Let's tentatively set it for July 29, and then is, is that a problem? Okay. I'm turning on my calendar. Mo morning or afternoon, Your Honor. Morning. Morning. And, that, and I will that say. That way, I've got all day if it takes it. They will. And I, I, I can state that the, the grounds for dismissal I anticipate will be Rule 8A of the Rules of Criminal Procedure plus the Due Process Doctrine of Prosecutorial Vindictiveness. <coughs> That's what I anticipated this time. I'm I can take it up. If we've just got to you, that's fine. If there's something touching on the other people, then I'll make that date available as well. Okay, I, I'm not available that day. That's why I'm just asking if this is for everyone or just this defendant. Well, I, <clears throat> I can do it the 22nd, a week earlier, or I would have to go into uh, the last week of August. 22nd will work for me, John. I, I can do it the last week of August, John. I'm on the 26th. 26th of August, tentatively. <laughs> I'm available. Mr. Pellis, check in. It's good for the state. If they haven't changed, and I think they have changed, 
used to the court system in Shelby County closed down during August. Maybe it's civil. I think it harkens back to the days before air conditioners. And they just have to change that rule. We both have trials in August. It's definitely not. Okay. So we'll hold that date. And then if problems arise, I can take up things by telephone conference. Do it. Okay? I mean, just scheduling things. I don't want to hear anything that is material. Just scheduling problems. Okay. All right? All right. Anything else on him today? I would like an opportunity to confer with Mr. Autry before he's taken back. I'd like to observe Mr. Dillon Adams' arraignment, but if I can make sure I have some time to apply. All right. Can we hold him? Where's my TDOC? Right here, sir. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, there are people in the courtroom that were subpoenaed by Mr. Ferguson that if he's not going to go forward, I'd ask that they be allowed to leave. Oh, certainly. All right. Anyone that's subpoenaed on behalf of State of Tennessee v. Jason Wayne Autry, you're hereby released. So long as they're subject to being present for any future motion hearing with regard to him. Thank you. All right. Mr. Autry, you got any questions? No, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's – we've got a place where he can leave after our hearing. Yes, sir. Yes, we do. Okay. So he can exit there and then you'll make him available. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. All right. Let's bring in John Dillon Adams. Your Honor, I do have an affidavit prepared, but he's not yet signed that, but I will be submitting that to the court. I've already found him to be indigent. That's correct, Your Honor. I don't know that it's necessary, but you're appointed on this. I'm going to execute it today's date, but it will be not pro tonque. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. You are John Dillon Adams. Yes, sir. Mr. Adams, in case 15CR30, a new indictment has been 
returned by the Decatur County Grand Jury. It contains earlier charges as well as additional charges, and you have been indicted along with two co-defendants, Zachary Rye Adams and Jason Wayne Autry. The first count of that indictment, you were charged with having committed the offense of felony murder, alleging that you did unlawfully and with the intent to commit kidnapping kill Holly Lynn Bobo in the perpetration or attempt to perpetrate kidnapping, thereby committing the offense of first degree murder in violation of TCA 39-13-202. Uh, it's generically known as felony murder. Do you understand what you have been charged with? Do you understand the nature of that charge? Count two, you're charged with having committed the offense of especially aggravated kidnapping of Holly Lynn Bobo uh, in violation of Tennessee Code Annotated 39-13-305. Do you understand what you're charged with on that count? Yes, sir. You understand the nature of that charge? Yes, sir. Count three of the indictment, you're charged with having committed the offense of especially aggravated kidnapping of Holly Lynn Bobo in violation, Bobo in violation of Tennessee Code Annotated 39-13-305. Do you with? Yes, Count four, you're charged with having committed the offense of that you did unlawfully and with intent to commit rape, kill Holly Lynn Bobo in the perpetration of or the attempt to perpetrate rape thereby committing the offense of first degree murder in violation of the Tennessee Code Annotated 39-13-202. Do you understand what you've been charged with in that count? Count five, you're charged with having committed the offense of aggravated rape in violation of Tennessee Code Annotated 39-13-502. Do you understand what you've been charged with in that count? Count six, you're charged with having committed the offense of aggravated rape of Holly Lynn Bobo in violation of Tennessee Code Annotated 39-13-502. Do you understand what you've been charged with? Count seven, you're charged with having committed the offense of aggravated rape in violation of 39-13-502. Do you understand what you've been charged with? Count eight, you're charged with having committed the offense of premeditated first degree murder of Holly Lynn Bobo in violation of Tennessee Code Annotated, Section 39-13-202. You understand what you're charged with? Yes, sir. Mr. Maddox, do you waive formal reading of the indictment? Your Honor, we have received a copy of the indictment as well as I've given a copy to the defendant and we'll waive formal reading of the indictment at this time. Let the record so reflect. Pleas of not guilty as to all eight counts will be formally entered on his behalf. Yes, Your Honor. Do we have the same situation concerning any motions in the old case? Uh, Your Honor, I did have motions that I filed underneath the old case. Uh, what I was asking for in those motions is that discovery be provided. I've been assured by the state and that, that is forthcoming. I think you're going to get we, more than you I, I think that's, that's probably true, Your Honor, uh, but I do need that. And uh, as long as it's forthcoming at this time, I do not need to proceed on with those motions uh, under the same circumstances that... Uh, those uh, files will not be closed until I've either been advised that the parties no longer wish to present them or they've been disposed of. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I, there are a few other matters that I do need to address the court on uh, under the new indictment, I guess you would say. Uh, it's my understanding, uh, or at least some of the other attorneys may have indicated, that they do not wish to file the, the motions again. However, in light of the, uh, the notice given by the state of Tennessee today, I will be filing all of my motions again due to the heightened scrutiny uh, that uh, that notice brings with it. So I will be refiling those, but I would Mr. like Maddox, to... Mr. I've been dealing with you for how many years? Uh, more than either one of us care to, to talk about, Since John. the memory of man runneth not, <laughs> I'm very familiar with what your computer generates in virtually every case that I have. Yes, Sean. I anticipate I will be seeing that yet again. Yes, Sean. Okay. Uh, however, if, we, if the state will agree to the same orders that we have already... Uh, agreed to under the first case, then that will belay any argument of those motions. All right. Uh, uh, 
Well, that's for record keeping purposes. Okay. All right. For, for any appellate. So case. anything else? And then, as I said, we'll be looking at August 26th. That's not a deadline for motions or anything. It's just an early hearing date if there's anything that's dispositive or that the parties feel particularly need the court's attention. Your, your Honor. And I, I will say, in thinking of this case, I've tried very hard since the very beginning to get this thing on track. There are times that I felt like the uh, children's game, the whack-a-mole, I'll whack it down and I'll have two more pop up over here. But I hope that we're past the primary obstacles and surprises in this case and we can take this to a reasonably uh, expeditious conclusion. Well, the number of years that I've dealt with you, Your Honor, I've never been whacked by you and I hope I don't get whacked now. <laughs> Your Honor, the I other... don't have friends or enemies, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, the other issue that I uh, would like to address is the state has said that they will be providing an index to this discovery. If I could impose upon the state to also make available someone who is aware of the current organization of the material on the hard drive, and make that person available to me so I can understand the organization that, as it is as and I also the different they're file willing, types. They're willing for a face-to-face -face exchange. And, and I had the same discussion with Mr. Maddox that I had with the others. Uh, we've already had a face-to-face -face or two and that, that offer remains on the table as well. I'm not at this point because we've already copied the discovery, not going to reorganize it. The index along with the face-to-face, -face, we'll point him where he wants to go. Okay. Sorry. All right, anything else? Uh, finally, Your Honor, uh, the previous cases were all individualized as to the defendants. Now with the new indictment, all three defendants have been brought underneath the same case number. I would ask that all parties in this case uh, if they would include all the defendants and all of the attorneys on any certificate of services so we could all receive uh, copies of motions and uh, other responses. I have no like problems. Uh, Ms. Thompson, you all right with that? I agree. Mr. Herbison? Sir. Okay. Same over here. And Mr. Herbison, you've had some change of address. If you'll get uh, various counsels, the address as well as the clerk's office and also Ms. Carroll. Okay. All right, anything else on him? No, Your Honor. Anything else we need to deal with today as to any of these defendants? Anything further from the state? No, sir. Anything further from no, Defendant Zach? No. Autry? Jason? No, Your Honor. All right. Then we will... Dylan, I beg your pardon. Uh, then we will hereby adjourn. All right!